Why not? <laughs> you want to be right at the front here, mate? Yeah. Glasses are there. Glasses, final glasses. Okay, guys, thanks for coming along tonight. So, tonight we're going to talk about Drewfish and Mull or Mulloway. And um, welcome along. We've got Stuart here, myself, Dougie. Um, and we're going to do everything, cover everything from. Uh, beach and rock fishing, um, then we'll talk about the seaway, then we'll move out to the pin, and then we'll go offshore and talk about the reefs and the blocks and stuff like that. So just get a show of hands, how many guys here beach fish? And how many have one over crack at a drill off the beach maybe? I love it. Yeah, a few, a few extra guys. And how about uh, seaway inside? And jumping pin, a few, and offshore. So offshore is probably about half and half actually, so a bit, bit of everything. Um, obviously, we do everything, so <laughs> you guys should do everything too if you've got the boat to get offshore, that is. Um, and that doesn't have to be big, it's just the troubles at night time. It's it, a bit bigger boat, it's handy. Um, so, anyway, we'll talk about everything, but we will talk about the gear and we'll talk about how to do it, where to go, and, uh, and then how to put baits on, that sort of stuff. And we'll finish up the night um, with the prizes, and then it's all happy days done. So, um, Estuary and Beach, has anyone caught a Jew off the beach here yet at all? No, no one's done that yet. Caught one, Ben. Good size, mate. Oh, maybe 10. No, that's good size. Yeah, it's probably around 12 kilos. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Fairly yeah, good. Yeah. Good. So just tell a bit about drewfish first. So drewfish are fairly fast-growing fish in their early stages. So um, they um, grow about 35 centimetres the first year, and then they grow around the legal size of 80 to 90 within five to six years. Um, then they slow down a bit, but at... 80 to 90, you'll, um, they're sort of at maturity to um, have babies and that sort of stuff. And um, that's when they reproduce, obviously. So that's why they increased the, ba uh, the size of them a few years ago from 45 to 75 for that purpose um, after they found that out. So um, 
And you will know, 75, 72 is a fairly decent fuel. It's around three and a half kilos or something like that. So it's a quality fish. Um, and I hate catching a 74 centimetre jewel and have to put it back, but that's the law. <laughs> that's the way it is. <laughs> what do I get rid of that small? You get a few. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, and then you've got um, the bag limit. So the bag limit's two per person. And it used to be more in New South Wales, now two in New South Wales as well. New South Wales are allowed 70 centimetres though, okay? So if you go to the border down, Bellum or something, cast uh, lures off the rocks and stuff, um, 70 is cool. Correct, <laughs> license. And when you come across the border, such a grey area, we ask everyone, you know, what's the law? Can you bring New South Wales fish back into Queensland, different size, different species, whatever, or different bag limits? I can't get a, a really good answer. If you any of you guys have a good answer, I'd like to know. It's a grey area, isn't it? Very grey area, yeah. And it's vice versa, the same scenario. So um, I don't even think they know, to be honest with you, how it stands, because you've got to prove it, right? Sorry? Oh, Murray Cod, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's probably right there too, mate. New Victoria and New South Wales, you're talking? No, New South Wales. Oh, in Queensland. Oh, right, okay, yep. Different size, different bag. Yeah, right, okay. But I fish like the Border River. Yes. New South Wales, and I'm back to Queensland. Yeah, we're going to Wendy's on either side, right? Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, no, it's a tricky one. And so offshore species. It's all, it's, we're on, we live in an area that's fairly uh, unique that we've got a borderline that's in the middle of our fishery. So it's a bit of a grey area for all of us, and I don't really know if we'll ever get that set right. But then no. we're talking about Jewfish tonight. <laughs> so, um, so Jewfish off the beach um, and not the rocks. So it is a really funny thing. I do a lot of rock fishing. I've done a lot of rock fishing over my lifetime, and Stu's done a lot too. And um, we get the odd Jewfish off the rocks here, but once you go to Tweed Heads or, or further south you go, they become rock eaters, if that makes sense. So once they get to Tweed Heads, they sort of, their mind thinking is they only bite on the beach, run by on the rocks. That's how it sort of works. So it's really weird. Go down further south, go Tweed, you get the odd ones off the wall down there. Go to Bruns, you get more off the wall. Go to Bellum, you get heaps off the wall. Or Luke, you get more off the wall. And further south, down southwest rocks, and that, they're everywhere off the wall. It's, but as you progress north, they seem to go off that sort of scenario. So down there, they fish the floods. So they've had great drew fish in the last sort of two or three months because they've had lots of dirty water going out and they fish big, uh, big hard body lures into that dirty water. They just fish off the rocks and cast up current and just bring it back, steady wine with the current. Pause, steady wine, pause, just bring it across the top because those dew fish are looking for any mullet swimming past and that's how it all works. Cast along the rock wall, cast out if you see any bait or whatever and, uh, and that's how you do it. But I wouldn't specifically do it um, around the sea where you should be flogging the dead horse a bit. You might get a mac tune or something. Um, probably more than you're going to get the Jewfish, even though you're, you're doing it. But tonight, to get, I want to get these guys into it. So um, in your, I've just got one on my rod there, Stewie. So in Sorry. your bag, so this is a bonus, this is about 40 bucks. Um, and they're a um, Rapala lure, about 100, and, 100 grams of. Around so, about 70 yeah, grams, I think they are. They cast like yeah. a mile in here. Um, and that's the sort of thing that we sell for fishing off the rocks, that sort of thing there. You've got one in your bag. Everyone's got one in their bags. There's a bonus that three and above what we normally give you. So give it a shot if you get a chance off the, off the rocks or off a, um, a river mouth, whatever. When you're beef uh, spinning, you want something in that sort of category, something around 12 to 13 foot long, a uh, big spin reel. I use 50 pound braid on it and um, uh, I think 60 to 80 pound leader, something like that. Yeah, and that's the sort of scenario, okay? Uh, but particularly if you've got mullet running at this time of the year, that's when you get your jewfish or if you got um, a flood and a lot of dirty water coming out and they work on all the bait. So they like the dirty water? They like the dirty water a lot, mate. Yeah, they do. Um, up here, they get a little bit flushed out from the dirty water. Um, offshore, uh, like there's heaps out in the reef, which we'll talk about a bit later, but um, as you go further south, it's dirty water around the river. They send in that dirty water. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a good look. I'm pushing so towards the top of the tide, so there's a lot of dirty water offshore and eventually it gets pushed in. Yeah. That clear join, that's where all your baits feeding on as well. And that's where they are, yeah. But I'd probably, if you wanted to have a, a shot at doing it properly, I'd probably pack up the weekend if you're heading down to um, Oluca or something like that and have a shot down there. Yeah. Off the beach here though, we get them off the beach here, okay, which they do down south as well. Um, their, their pattern or the area that they tend to be in is as far north about Bundy. Then they go to, they change to black jew, which is a similar thing but a different jew. And they, from Bundy all the way south around to about, I think, um, north, this north of Perth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's their sort of bottom half of Australia where they live. 
and obviously WA, uh, sorry, West, uh, South Africa, they get the ones that are the cobs, the bigger ones. Um, did anyone see that picture on Facebook this week? It was hooting around the place. It was about 75, 80 kilo one. It's a big chewy. What do they call it? A cob. Um, it was huge. Yeah. And uh, the biggest one I caught is about a metre 34, I think. And Jack's, my son, that one recently, about a metre 36, he beat me. <laughs> that was offshore. Um, but yeah, which is around 50 pounds, sort of thing. Solid. But jewies can be skinny, they can be fat. They can be all different shapes as well. But when we fish at the beach, we're using a totally different setup. So, not using the so some guys do, but um, I, I would persist more with, with uh, baits. Uh, it's hard to fish a live bait off the beach because you've got surf and hard to get it out there without killing it because you're casting it through the air and it's going to whack in the water. <coughs> um, you can use a slide rig and it'll swim out on the slide rig, um, but you need the sea to be not too too bad when you do that. Um, my suggestion would be tail up fillet. Tail fillets are really good, okay, uh, for jewies. Um, slimy mackerel, uh, not too bad as well. Uh, even a, a big pilly like that sort of size there is okay, big pillies. But you want uh, a decent bait. And I'd run them on sort of um, 3 8 o's or 3 9 o's, that, that sort of rig there sort of thing. With a, just your normal 40, 60 pound leader and a fill a decent sinker. I wouldn't use a Pat Noster style, pass that around through. Wouldn't I wouldn't use a Pat Noster style, I'd use more just a running sinker so I can actually pull it through. Uh, yeah, and just uh, keep your rod tip up and keep this, uh, the tension on your line. I feel like fishing for tailor, but the bite's not uh, as quick and ag aggressive. It's more, it's like dunk, dunk, and then you'll just feel and grab it and run. It's as simple as that. The big myth about jew fishing is everyone says, oh, you got to let them run, let them run, let them run, let them run, then hit it, because they turn the bait around their mouth. That's a lot of crap. Mm. When they go bang, bang, and bang, you go bang. That's as simple as that, okay? Don't let it run, because you'll lose it. You go, oh, I should have I should, I hit it, because it's not come back. <laughs> it's already got the bait and gone. And it's probably full, so you've missed a chance. Um, I don't know if any of you guys differ to that technique, but that's what I do. I'm used to. Yeah, no, yeah. I feel them and strike them. Yeah, strike yeah. them hard. Yeah, if you give them too much yeah. line, they swim back into holes and around rocks, yeah. and they swim where they mm. shouldn't. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so Jewies are very, they're a bit like a, uh, a bigger version of a jack, they understand their territory pretty well. So uh, if you're fishing in Seaway, for example, uh, rocks are a problem because they know which rock to go into. If you're fishing offshore, they know which reef or which pipe to go under or whatever it might be. So yeah. off the beach, though, it's clean. It's very clean fishing. So just cold on your knackers, that's it. Do you sort of anchor the bait or do you let it... Yeah, that's a good call. Um, as I said before, if you're using a Pat Noster type rig, you'd be anchoring the bait as much as you can. Getting a rod to cast a six or eight ounce sinker out is pretty difficult. And also casting without snapping it off Difficult if, you, if your line's not strong enough. Um, but no, I just like a running sinker, mate, and I walk the beach, walk the hole, walk with the gutter with the line sort of thing. Always cast up, up current. Now, it normally runs north here on the beach. And um, just keep my rod tip up and I just sort of work it. And like a lot of our customers catch big jewies right there with, at the feet, maybe the feet on whiting or, or maybe the mulder in close, mate. Um, but generally speaking, um, it doesn't need to be right at the back in the, in the next gutter or wherever, you know. So just generally walk with it and when it gets close enough into the next gutter, the shoreline gutter, if you haven't got a bite by then, obviously you want to cast back out again. Yeah, they are. Um, probably 10 to 15 kilos average size. You might get a little around seven or eight, but generally they're 10 plus, yeah. And the best time is June, July. That's why we do the seminar now. So you've got to get out the back. Like no, you don't, know. That's what's saying that can be in the close gutter, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but you need to get out like past it. the shore break, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Is, that, is that more towards around the mouth? Or uh, no, no, it can be down the spit. We, we fish like South Australia ship, mate. Yeah, okay. Beach, yep. Yep. But I mean, I've never even come close to catching Yeah, so you, as I was saying, you might get them on a big pilcher, but if you use a flesh bait, you've got to specifically use the bait for them. Yeah. So I'd be using um, like a tailor fillet and a decent hook rig setup, 380s or 390s, whatever. Um, and uh, and just fishing a bit different. Get the sharks are the problem though. Get a lot of shovel nose and other sharks. Um, but that's part of the parcel. But and you get brim peck 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 the bait as well. Uh, but yeah, and I've caught tail on tail on big rigs too over time. But um, you need to specifically fish for them if that makes sense. Is there a time yeah. for the day, though? Yeah, um, uh, definitely at off the beach you don't get many during the daytime, it's more nighttime. 
Yeah, and uh, and fish at the beach at night time is an art to that because she needs to know roughly the waves and the, where the holes are in the market. These days you've got GPS on phones and everything so you can mark exactly where you're going to be, you know. Get a, go down low tide of the daytime, whatever. Mark it on your GPS on your screen, whatever. Or, and then uh, we'll put, put a stick in the sand, whatever. And then go back at night time and, and there she is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Full moon or...? Uh, full moon, uh, definitely, uh, but not necessity. But when we're fishing offshore, which we'll talk about a bit later, I, I specifically like that moon rise, the sunset. The moon rises on the horizon, it's wham, bam, they just come on. And I think the beach will be the same scenario. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but just give it a shot. Um, but what you were saying before, mate, I'd be using a fairly decent sinker to hold it out as long as you can. Maybe a nine ball or ten ball sinker. We've got pool sinkers there now down to 12s or 14s. 14s, yeah. Which is They're about huge. a half pound or something. Yeah. Yeah, big things. Yeah. Um, you get those slide stickers too, you know, like, so they're like a slide goes on your line above your swivel and you can clip on a half pound snapper lead. So you just go like rig, leader, swivel. Mm, you know, basic like, as, mate, that's it. The, the, only, no, the only time I use a swivel above the swivel, if that makes sense, if the sinker in between is if it's, if it's howling 20 knots or something. Yeah. Because you know yourself, you throw it into the wind and you're always casting up, sort of slightly up, 45 degrees into the wind and your sinker gets thrown right at the line and it doesn't make any distance at all, right? Um, but if you keep that, uh, and keep your trace fairly short too, by the way, um, but if you keep your swivels sort of that far apart and your ball sinker in there and then your leader and then your hooks, um, the sinker can't go any further than that area, so that area like catapults out a lot further. Yeah, you say yeah. 40 centimetres before? 40 centimetres between your hooks and your, and your trace, short, keep it short. Because the more you can keep it short, the further you're going to cast. Yeah, it, and that'll still work too, and it'll actually be probably more nicer in the water because it'll be a lot more free, but it won't cast as good though. You have a bit, when, when it's a good day, it'll be right, a westerly line, it's okay, but as soon as you get any easterly in the wind, and it'll be a little bit of a, a bit of a sort of, won't go out as far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So always the, the closer your sinker is to your bait, the further it casts. Simple as that, yeah. Um, but where to fish around here to do that? Um, someone asked before, I would definitely be, uh, as I said, checking out the gutters um, along the spit. Um, there's always a good one just up from between sort of um, the Mirage car park and the Seawall car park. There's only something along the front there. Or just past the Seawall car park, Phillip Park, I think it's called. There's a good um, gutter there always, and it comes in really close, and it's a good high tide thing. Um, try and get your tide around that sort of five to six o'clock at night, and fish the first two or three hours of the run out if you're fishing the beach. Really good tide. Um, the other tides on the beaches, if you've got the reverse, and you've got sort of uh, low tide about five, and they're out the back, but once the water gets deep enough to come over the bank into the sh shoreline gutter, they'll come over, which might mean around six or seven at night. Yeah, as it fills up, they come in and feed on the bait and stuff. Yeah, that's a good tie too. Um, and other areas, I might be saying before, in the pin bar, definitely at the top end of the pin bar. Um, and maybe, where it yeah, where it wraps around, mate, just before it sort of gets too slopey, where it's sort of still deep on the edge there. Um, or back this way, um, normally at Courage, there's a couple of good holes there, uh, at the back of Courage. Um, yeah, river mouse are, are definitely to go down south. I used to catch a lot down south west rocks. We used to be able to camp on the north side, real close to the river there. You can't do it these days, so it's a national park. But back in 15, 20 years ago, um, look, we just plucked chilies off the beach there for as much as you want to get them, you know. Um, but I think they sit on the run out tide, they sit around the corner in deep holes and wait for anything to come out. But we don't have that sort of luxury here because we've got rock walls and and then it's you know, like sand, sandy for a while to get to a hole. It's pretty shallow, so yeah, give it a go. Um, down south, though, um, I have caught a couple of dew down at Maggie's Hole, which is the back of Cabrita, just north of Cabrita Caravan Park there. I was down there um, two weeks ago with the family, and there's a really good hole at the moment. It always is. It's a good spot. It's like your beach fishing. Good tail down there as well, so that might be worth a go. It's only an hour down the road drive, so not too bad. Uh, any questions on that at all, folks? 
No? Okay, we'll scoot. Oh, just one thing. What we're talking about, beach, sand pump and jetty. Is anyone fish off the sand pump and jetty at all? No? Okay, it's a different place. Um, I don't know if it's open at the moment to fish off because they're doing work on it. But um, there's a hell of a lot of get caught there, like a lot. And really big ones, like 20, 25 kilo ones. Um, the hassle of any jetty, and, the, and jetties are a great place for jew because they hang around all the bait, they hang around the lights, and they feed around there. But problem is pylons and, um, and get the jew up six or eight metres up to the jetty. So you use a, a gaff, like this type of thing here, and it's called a cliff gaff. So this one here, you tie a rope to that, like eight mil ropes, and you can get a hold of them, pull it up, and your line slots in here. So it's like a flying fox, so your, your rods goes down to the fish down there. Hook it on there, you get the rope, you just let the rope run free and it slides down the line. And when it gets around the fish, you sort of drop it over the fish like that, and then you pull it up and it hooks into the fish. That's how they work, very easy. Okay, and sort of hinge out over the fish, and then you got it. Um, quite a good thing, this is straight made, so it's a bit expensive. This is a cheaper version, which a lot of guys use because they're cheap. Um, it's a little bit expensive because they're straight made. <laughs> Anyhow, um, again, tie rope onto that. Um, and I think this one here, you put a D shackle on the end there, then actually um, undo the shackle, put your line through the shackle, and then do it back up, and then slide it down your line, like that way. Goes down, and then you just sort of reef on and reef on it, so you can hook it inside the fish and pull it up that way. Because otherwise you're trying to walk it to the to the beach, which is generally ends in mishap. It's very hard to get around the pylons with waves and everything happening. Yeah. yeah. And it's normally a 300 metre walk, so it's a bit hard. <laughs> Yeah, sharks get it, whatever. Um, that's probably better on the beach, I think. Yeah. Okay, Seaway. Uh, Seaway is like, it's probably one of the best do fish spots to get around, as well as the pin. Um, Seaway tend to be a little bit smaller fish than the pin, but the pin fishes um, extremely well as well. Um, the beauty of the Seaway is you can fish it for a, a couple of hours during the tide, at certain stages of the tide, where the pin is sort of got like about a, an hour window at the most, 50 minutes maybe, because uh, it runs a lot hard up there. Um, Stu, you want to talk about the seaway, mate? Yeah, I've fished the seaway a bit. Um, I've caught them on plastic, Sarah. I've caught them on vibes, I've caught them on yuccas, liveys, any of that type of thing. Um, I think the biggest thing is knowing where they kind of sit at what stage of the tide. Um, there's a couple of drops, I always just fish the north wall. North wall definitely fishes better than the south wall. Um, there is a bit of a hole at the end, Doug will draw it up. <laughs> draw it up. But, um, it, um, I don't know how we're drawing this, but anyway. That's the south, um, that's the south wall. Okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, biggest thing, as soon as Doggy draws it. <coughs> okay, <laughs> this is obviously <laughs> the north wall. That's Stratty. Um, there is a deeper hole around this type of area. Um, starts around 50 metres in from the end of the wall and probably goes about 50 to 100 metres out. Um, and all the jewies seem to congregate in that general area. Um, I have caught them up here, I've caught them over here on the front. But um, the best thing is you need to kind of, it's always a lot easier if you've got a sounder and you know how to read your sounder. Um, the better fish do sit where the rocks meet the sand. I've never really caught a lot up on mm. top of the rocks, I don't know about you Doug. No, but, no, no. Um, it's about 50 yeah. foot deep, so we went 45 yeah. to 52 feet, roughly. Yeah, and um, on an incoming tide, you want to kind of start way over here, um, out and around from the north wall. And it's only because of the big pressure point on the end of the north wall, you kind of drift around it and then it'll get sucked in the seaway. Um, and then on the run out tide, obviously, you just start around the same depth on the inside and you just get sucked out. You just go straight out. Um, but the biggest thing is, yeah, you just need to be vertical up and down from your bait or your lure or whatever because you're going to mm. get a lot of snags. Do you use yeah. I don't. I always drift. Yeah, and I hate people. No offence to anyone that spot locks. I hate <laughs> people that spot lock because you can't, you, honestly, you can't. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really hard to fish spot lock when the tide's running. So yeah. we always say to customers, spot lock's a great thing when it's windy because yeah. it holds on the spot and there's not much too much current, so your line's pretty well straight down. But if you spot lock in raging current, you've got to use like a sinker that big yeah. to hold it down, otherwise it just goes whoompa. So you're defeating the purpose. So when you're drifting, your line's pretty well straight down. Yeah. So it's very hard to catch fish on spot lock in current. Yeah. Okay. And you lose so yeah. much more gear if you're spot locked 
and you're drifting baits back or mm. whatever. Mm. Yeah, you've got loose line. Same, same offshore too, mate. Yep. Great when it's windy, terrible as current. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I always drift and try to keep pretty vertical. <coughs> yeah, with a plastic, a vibe, a bait, anything. Yeah. Mm. And you can always feel your bait on the bottom or your lure or whatever. And um, you just need to know when to strike. So I kind of let it hit the bottom. You feel it rattle around a bit on the bottom, lift it up about a rod's length. And that's the only bit of line I'll give them. So like a meter, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll hit it from there. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Just, just pass it, right? Yeah. No, you you got it. You're on, and you just yeah. that rod. That's it. Yeah. 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 So this is one of the little. This is one of the actually Mark will take rod, but I use it for everything, including fishing for jewies and seaway. Um, I run a couple of five O's in the seaway, so I find most of the jewies are in that sort of seventy to a meter ten, maybe a little bit smaller. When I fish at night time in the seaway, though, I fish tend to be back more down towards way breakway. Yeah. And I'm using eight O's or seven O's and bigger baits and bigger sink or whatever else and bigger rod probably. Um, but that's what I'm generally using in the seaway. Um, and as Stu was saying, when you're fishing, oh, the silks are sharp. Yeah. When you're fishing, um, you're fishing pretty well. You, you can nearly feel every rock. Does that make sense? You feel a rock, you lift it up a little bit. And you're watching your sound, as Stu said, the whole time. And if it goes from 50 to 45, you lift it up a little bit or you take a bit of a turn because you only get snagged up otherwise. Yeah. 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 As soon as you see your line go out a little bit, it's wind it while you can, otherwise it'll get stuck. But hopefully you get a bite before that stage happens, you know. They're pretty aggressive, like we're in the seaway it's too, I'll tell you. Yeah, they're... When they're on, they're on. You yeah. just drop down the bottom, as soon as it hits the bottom, <laughs> you take the slack up, it's already boom, 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 boom. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Pin. pin bar, same thing, mate, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, that's the scenario, and and the pin bar, you got a lot more trees on the bottom there, but. A little bit harder the fish yeah. in some areas. Mm. Uh, about a seven ball. Seven. Yeah. yeah, seven ball. I'm using it on this one. I think this one's about 30 or 40 pound braid. Um, it's probably as light as I'd fish there too, by the way. Um, I wouldn't use my flathead rods, which I have, but not intentionally for Jew. I've been yeah. casting for whatever. Good fun. Good fun. Yeah. yeah, good fun. But uh, And the trouble is sharks, you know. You spend, spend too much time getting them in, the sh you get sharks. There's sharks everywhere. A ray, did you yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Painful, mate. The head. Yeah, oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 A, I've only ever swam across that seaway once on a board with my son, and that was a long time ago. And I'm a bit more wiser these days. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. To, to, everything live bait, I do, yes. Um, the reason being for me, for two reasons. One is, and I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but if you get sort of meter trace, your livey tends to always get tangled up around, it swims up and gets caught around the line a bit, especially if you're fishing vertically, because it's just going around that. If it's on an angle, it may not be as bad, but when it's straight down, it tends to get caught up all the time. Second reason is um, snag. You've got an extra metre from the, where you're actually hitting the bottom with the sink, does that make sense? So that metre can just hook up anywhere. Unfortunately, yeah. it doesn't float up. It just drags as well. So. He's just looking for trouble. Um, and when you're fishing the seaway, that bite period might be for an hour or two hours. Like, I'll rig up, I just rig up um, hooks and leader with no swivel. I do, do a quick all bright, real quick, and I snap off. And he continuously might rig up eight or ten times in an hour period. Because that's how many times you get snapped off. If you run a sinker, swivel, meter, leader, whatever, and then your live bait, I reckon you need 15 rigs. You yeah. Double the amount. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest thing is when you're drifting and you're feeling those rocks, if you've got a trace, you mm. lift it, your sinker's not off, but your live is pretty smart, it's just going to swim under it. Yeah. So yeah. I fish mm. the pin like all the time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know how I've lost thousands of rods. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're saying, mate. It's yeah, so high, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Like uh, last yeah. Week. yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's um yeah, put a different hat on when I'm out in the boat. But um Do you ever run several yeah. hooks? Several hooks? Circle hooks. Oh circle no. hooks, no, mate, I used two years ago. Uh, I do for other things that are short, I'm using Pat Noster and that. Um, that's when it works really good. But and I'm trolling for mile and stuff that has no weight on it and they just can grab it and hook themselves. Um, but no, Jay hooks are his better. Yeah. 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 And getting back yeah. to like making up your rigs, I actually make um a little bit different. 
Mm. I don't use a snap, but we just don't want this to show you. But you can tie them up and put your sinker straight to your hook mm. to a swivel. Yeah. And you just, if you're la a bit lazier, you can just clip it straight onto a snap or you can just mm. tie your um, leader straight to it. It's done. Easy. It's easy. I have yeah. them all in a box and um, it's just quicker. Yeah. Mine wrapped it around a bit of foam, but yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so just uh, you're going to go through a few sinkers and a few rigs. It's as simple as that, guys, and a bit of leader. But I've um, got plenty of that in your bags tonight, so hopefully it's simple as sinkers. Snail fill them. Yeah. Then yeah, mate. Yeah. 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 Especially with liveys, um, and the way I'm going to rig up, this one's nearly defrosted enough to hook him up in a minute. <laughs> um, but with liveys, um, if you um, hook it up right, they, they can swim and they're perfect and they'll last quite a while. If you put a gang hook through it, they tend to be stiff and they die really quick. Yeah. 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 But, uh, oh, okay. If you're using um, pilchers and stuff like that, uh, I'll be using gangs. How's that sound? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Hmm. Stu, which types do you prefer to see one? Run out. Oh, the last of the run out's mm. better. But, um, yeah, I've caught them on the run in as well. You just catch them at different spots. Four so, yeah. So, there's a bit of a drop off about here-ish, around about. Um, like the rocks from the seaway come out that way. And um, so you're drifting along this line type of thing. And there's a bit of a drop off around there and you get them there on the run in, right? As you kind of feed your bait down and like, you get them at the drop of that hole. But um, on the run out, mate, you just catch them on the whole hole and it's good, mm. yeah. You get, yeah, you get, especially the last sort of two months, you get uh, jacks and um, sweet lip and snapper as well. You get a bit of everything. A catch, yeah. yeah. You get snapper for the next month, actually, yeah. in that, on the right last sort of And that's when it's the dirtiest, and you probably think there's going to be nothing there, but that's when they bite. Yeah, it's like a fish yeah. in a soup some days, mm. yeah. but they're just on the tube. Boat on the end of the wall? Uh, well, you start about 50... Oh, the, on no, the outgoing? 50 yeah, metres down, 50 metres down, mate, and going out to yeah. about probably 25, 30 metres yeah. past it. No, nah. no, 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 no. Nah. Um, the, the sign to go across, like the, uh, that's probably the tower there. Yeah. And the sign's about here, the pipe that goes across, I think. Yeah. I actually want it to be a bit further back, actually. Yeah, it's in a bit further, but yeah, anyway. Sorry. Yeah. 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 There's, I think there's a phone around about just where that tree line ends. Safety phone. And I'll start, I'll start like 50 metres in from the end. That's mm. about it. Yeah. There's a safety phone there. Yeah, there's a phone for the surface. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. Blue phone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. 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 I normally yeah. start at the first guy that's spot locked and end on the last <laughs> guy that's spot locked, and then I go back and do it again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is sort of leapfrog each other. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. If everyone drifts and everyone does the same thing, it's so much easier, mm. and everyone catches so many more fish, yeah. and you lose less gear. It's just better. And when you see a guy out here, and especially a bit of swell on, you start to panic. He's the one that's got the fish on. Yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. gone, yeah. gone past the, the stop zone. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So just be careful why you said that's the trouble, mate, on the run out tide. It, it's when it's at its roughest, too. Yeah. So let's be careful. Sound tips in the seaway? Mm, I, I, there's always bait there. I, I believe yeah. there's even probably slimies and yakkers in there at times. Even, I don't know about this dirty water, though, but go back a few months ago, there was. Yeah. Um, you catch them there, you know. Um, there's always pillies there, lots of pillies at the moment. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the biggest thing. Um, Ben, you just got to find where the rocks make the sand, where mm. it's rough and then it looks smooth. Mm. And the biggest thing is if you're fishing down the back, I always fish down the back because I've got a tiller, tiller steer, um, and you've got a half decent sound, you should be able to see your sinker. Should. So worst comes to worst, you let it hit the bottom and you lift it up slowly, drop it down, lift it up. And if you can see a line like... Yeah, like that, when you lift it and then when you drop it, you know where it is. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's hard to see a little sinker, but like a size seven and above, yeah. should, it should just see it. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll just show a line because it's going the same um, same speed as your boat. Make sure your mate's yeah. using a light line because there's nothing worse than your mate getting hooked up with a heavy line. And because he's hooked up and he's trying to break off, your line then starts to go out. And that's when yeah. you get snagged up because you've got too much line out. And it becomes a bad thing. Yeah. You want to break his line off so you can <laughs> do that perfect drift. Um, so you were talking about plastics and vibes before. Mm. Yep. Slow. Yeah, I don't do it any fast or anything like that. I just like vibe. I just vibe fast enough so I can feel it vibe. 
And um, same with plastic, so I just kind of work it up a meter-ish type of thing. Pretty close to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so quite an heavy jig in. Is that yeah. an ounce? Yeah. It's a two ounces. Yeah. Two. Work it up, let it sit back, work it up, let it sit back. Pretty much, mm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm only, I'm not winding at all, I'm just lifting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. up the pin area, that's one of my favourites, that actually gold green one there. I call it, when I've been fishing for flatties, I've got so many jewies on that. Um, not a real big ones, maybe a metre, that's about it. But they just go crazy on it. I use a, an ounce and about a 6 or 7 um, on that one. I'm sometimes even a 2 ounce. Um, big shads like that type of thing are really good with good tail action. It just, it just vertically teabagging it and lets you back down. Yeah. Um, Colour wise, bright whites are really good. Fluoros are good. Um, and yeah, there's yeah. a few other colours that are not too bad as well. Yeah, my favourite is just a 5 inch white jerk shad. Catch heaps of flatties on them, you catch heaps of everything on it. Oh, yeah, 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 one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the big one, yeah. The coloured one, mate. I mean, the centred one, sorry. No, straight one. Straight one, yeah, straight one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah these. The, the nine inch, the gulps to a nine inch one now, which has been very really popular. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're good too. Um, but in plastics, yeah, so it's the same scenario, same drift, same everything, but you're just vertically lifting it up and down. Very slow, no, no winding, no casting, just yeah. up and down, up and down. I do down. actually cast my plastic up drift a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. But just to fish it Start down. it off. Yeah. But that's it. Do you upsize like your vibe if you can't keep it straight? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, in the vibe, there's yeah. a couple of strews. Like, so if it's just on the turn of the tide, you can get away with, like, a little 100 mil one. Yeah. With their 20 grams. I think they're about 30 grams. 50 grams. 50 grams, sorry. Yeah. I'll pass those yeah. around to you. Mate. There's a couple of um, pretty life, like, pretty natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the wind's a problem, mate. So that's when the electric is okay if you've got not much current. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why that last of the run out's pretty good. It kind yeah, of slows yeah, down a little bit. Down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you'll find they bite really good that last of the run out. They don't really bite on the turn and that first push of the incoming they'll bite and that's yeah, it. That's yeah. Hour, hour hour. Pretty much, yeah. Um, just another thing too, um, hopefully Russell's not watching this. But a mate of mine, Russell, he does um, a bit of chartering, he does a lot of fish on the pin and, and he's really good on catching big jewies like twenty plus kilo ones. And he actually um, drops down a downrigger with like big deep divers on like that fellow there and just sits them in the current. So he's spot locked in the current, drops the deep diver down, drops about you know, 10 metres behind the ball, just and just lets it swim and drops down two of them, and they get smashed. I mean, have you ever tried that, mate? No. No, I hope you're not watching us. Sorry, Seaway would be the same scenario. Yeah, but Seaway you might want to downsize maybe the lure a little bit. Maybe go down to... Has it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, well, the whole. washed out, Yeah, that's what I say. The whole top yeah. of Australia, North Australia, that's changed. The yeah. bottom end, too. Yeah, probably got more that size there. That's that last, uh, the last, not the last comp run. King of the King of the Pen, the one that had before that. Yep. The last one that ran with Sunday on the roof. Yeah, yep. That weekend, the week was so many doing the head ridiculous. That's in May, May, isn't it, I think? Yeah, May. Last, no, uh, last year? No, no, I'm talking about the one that was on like five years ago. Oh, right, okay, a while ago, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Like every Yeah, it's a great spot for them. And, like, I think they all come out of the Logan eventually because I know we're casting at the Logan, the amount of little G you get in casting is just ridiculous, you know. Um, they, they obviously breed well, uh, as in numbers of little fish. Uh, it just started now, so they're all year round. Um, but I think winter's well, now sort of that you know, 20, uh, 21 to maybe 19 degrees. Yeah. Seems to be really good. Cool, 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 cool wind, yeah. yeah. I've always found in the seaway, but you catch less but bigger ones over summer. I don't know if that's just me personally, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Coomera, um, years ago we used to fish up past the power lines there. There's a hole just past the power lines. We used to get them there, Ben. And we used to get lots also, I believe, on the Tarana Street, where the boat ramp is at Tarana Street. Just on the, off the foreshore in the boat, though, in the middle of the channel there, sort of. 
with a, a few boats are moored up. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we see a lot around the Sundial Bridge, under the Sundial Bridge. And they're all sort of, back those days, you keep them at 50, but they're around 60 to 75 maybe. Yeah. And Yabby's with a go. Yabby. Believe it or not, Yabby. <laughs> and you go and get like 10 or something, you know. Um, but I don't know, I wouldn't fish that way for them these days, that's for nah. sure. We've caught a lot yeah. of like around Riviera as well. Yeah, yeah Riviera's the spot too, yeah. 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 Just where the lights like meet the dark type of thing. Yeah, or um, uh, straight out pretty much. But if you can go yeah. there, get in trouble. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get in close, um, it's not too bad. <laughs> mm. They were up there about <laughs> two months ago or three months yeah. ago. And uh, there's some big fish there, but yeah. I don't know if barra or Jew, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Has anyone here caught a barrier, Gold Coast barrier? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you would have. Yeah. yeah. There. Um. I saw. I saw a screenshot from a mate of mine yesterday, and his son's been getting a few. And there's at least twenty or maybe thirty in the screenshot. So there's. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And a mass is like meter ten, yeah. meter twenty. You know. Oh, is it meter eleven? That's a good size, mate. Yes, yeah, so that's a solid barrel Monday. Do they? Yeah. So they're, they're all through the system, so that's a great thing for us as a fishery. I haven't got one yet. <laughs> you want to see? No. No, yeah. Might have hooked one, but haven't yeah. got one. Top of the Coombe River. Top of the Coombe River, yep. Top of the Narang, top of the Coombe River. Um, so any questions on the jewies in the seaway at all, guys? Or jumping pins? Yeah, Ah, uh, yeah, do. Um, and I have done really well there too, mate. Not really big Jew, um, but there's, there's two ways of doing it. Oh, sorry. No, that's right. Let's try and find the red one somewhere here. Oh, actually, I might just leave that there. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get snagged up, you fish the pipe one. Yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> so I, I yeah. like to fish here on the last to run out, first to run in. Um, there's a green around here somewhere. And a red over here, and your little yellow markers about here somewhere. And um, I find this area here is really, really good. And I will start my drift sort of here on the run out, and drift to just past, or maybe even I've even caught them down down past, maybe 40 meters inside the pipe. So about 50 meters up, about 40 meters that way, so 100 meter drift. Um, that seems to be really good in the last the run out tide. Uh, live herrings are fine there. You don't need to go ashore and get yakas or slimy, so herrings are good. Um, and then we've got a couple of guys, Ian um, and a couple of other guys that fish on the running tide and they're fishing like, they're fishing with anchor but like a spot lock type system. So they'll anchor their boat up here, let's get rid of that for a sec. They'll, they'll put their boat here sort of thing on anchor, they're using a solid anchor that can hold them in on the bottom and they're running like a pound of lead and dropping their lines back right on the, just before the pipe with liveys. And that's how they fish, and it's ripping in at six knots or whatever it is, you know. When you're, when you're saying lives like your herring, like oh, they're using they're using through the or? Uh, they're using slimies and yakas there, but with a herring, yeah, um, <coughs> it's sort of a little bit different shape to everything else. Not a very good herring, but something like that. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can hook it in here. This it's looks like a whale because it takes up half the seaway, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> There have been whales in the sea, yeah. right? <laughs> you yeah. can hook it up, up in there. Um, I don't like to hook it in the back because they tend to flap in the current and... Yeah, they drown the, really. They drown. If the fish are on, they'll hit it, but um, I'd rather do it in the front there. And if, the, and if they're a little bit dead or anything you've got is dead... So just, seven or eight, I... I know, about five yeah. or six yeah. on a herring, five yeah. or six. Um, and if it's dead, that's his little mouth there. Yeah. Um, I run it through both like that, just pinning, pinning closed. Um, I never run it from the back, always from the head. And sink is sitting right there. No, not through the eye before it, sorry. Yeah? Oh, you can go through the eye, but sometimes they fall off because they wiggle so much, you know? Yeah, but they laugh. Yeah. Oh, they, you probably would. Yeah. They go blind. They can't see the fish coming. That's, that's, the beauty of slimies and yakas, and that is, you can feel, their, you can feel them stressing, you know? Sorry about the greenies watching this, but yeah, you drop down and it's like, Duh, nothing, and then, brrr, yeah, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. And you can just about feel the fish breathing on them, you know? But if they're dead, it's just like, you're just waiting, you know? 
If he's blind, I don't know if he would threat. He probably wouldn't do the part. <laughs> 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 so it's a reliable place to get live uh, um, Like herring, that stuff. So inshore, mate. Uh, inshore, yeah, there is. Um, you need a cast net, though, really, to do it right. And the, most of the time, your best spots around the boat ramps where you put your boat in at, you know? Um, or any bridges? Yeah, bridges, yeah. that's right. So, um, bridges are actually really good. Hmm. Yeah, so, whereabouts do you go from, mate, eh? normally? Oh, um, End of Smith Street. End of Smith Street. And you, you actually get out from the pontoon there. Uh, Lotus Creek, <coughs> and you might have a car just around uh, where the Coast Guard is there, perhaps. Um, but I'd probably go over to Air Sea Rescue over the other side and cast their pontoon. Or around the Sea World pontoon. Yep. Or Beijing, uh, got the jetties. Beijing got the jetties, good yeah. jets, that's right. Um, otherwise, um, where the Renault Bay Canal comes in, and you've got the first bridge at Renault Bay Shopping Centre here, the, the bait's always in this area here. And that's the jetty there and the jetty there. It's always around the bridge, and if it's not there, it's on the next bridge down, same area in the middle. They're always chirping on the top, and there's heaps. Yeah. 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 Pike are a really Pike, another really yeah. good life bait as well. For bigger too. Um, you just get um like trolling the weed beds just north of Wave Break and around Wave Break Anchorage and stuff. Little hard bodies that um, don't have any up here, but um, mm. yeah, any small hard bodies that dive reasonably deep, but um, you want to hold your rod tip up. And the secret is you got to flick it heaps. Yeah. So your lure's not really dive in. It's just more flick. Yeah. You get weeded up otherwise. Yes. You're only yeah. about a metre, a half metre of water. Yeah. Trolling for them. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is squid. So the water's too deep for squid now, but when the squid are around, they are like the number one bait uh, for liveies. And you just hook it in the helmet. So have a squid jig rigged up all the time. Um, and if that's his squid there, and that's his head, at least tangles, um, they've got like sort of flaps. Depends if it's an arrow squid or a or a calamari, but the hardest part of a squid is this section here. And you and you do use a circle hook, I've asked about circle hooks before. That's one of the only baits I use a circle hook for. About a 6-0 or 7 -0 circle, and just pin it through through the that hard part. And they get smashed. You don't need a keeper or anything else down further. They'll they'll just smash it. Yeah, you're on. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to give up a squid for a bait. <laughs> when you when you get misses one squid, take squid on. Um, and the other real good bait that works too, guys, and there's plenty of them around at the moment is garfish. Garfish are very hardy in the bait tank too. They'll last forever. Um, so and garfish are they just love eating garfish, so maybe get yourself some garfish. Just a float and a bit of prawn. And you can go and catch ten in like a lot quicker than catching pike. Yeah. And same area and you'll catch catch one gar. Okay, they're good solid sized baits too. Yeah. Um, any other questions at all? Um, Sky Seaway. Seaway? Yeah, yeah. Jerk shack. Yep. Five inch white. Yep. That's me. Yep. Sinks good. Six inch scrub or yep. a um, paddle tail. Like the one you got in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. With a jerk shad, you can fish a little bit lighter jig head. Only because it's more hydrodynamic. Sinks faster. Yeah, mm -hmm. fish it on a lighter rod, like I fish it on something like that. And um, yeah, 20 or 30 pound leader and just, and only reason being is you can feel the bottom better. Yeah. You know when it's hit the bottom, you're not having any loose line, yeah. less snags. Yeah. Yep. What do you, what do you find for, like, produces the most? Liveys? Liveys, 100%. Yeah. Liveys, yeah. yeah, number one. Yeah. yeah, like when they're on thick, if you, the base are obviously um, hard to get. And um, sometimes you'll hook them up and they, for some reason, fall off really easy. Um, if it's not hooked up correctly. Uh, I will quick, actually, I might just cut that rig off that, um, off that blue rod there. But, oh, off that one? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'll just hook one up. How, how I hook up the live, I'll pass it around to you guys. Um, but yeah, they fall off and sometimes it's, the sea's too big to go and it's too windy to go and get live bait. So you've got to get pike or what Stewie's saying or something like that. So. Um, that you'd have other lures or something as a standby. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Have one as well. 
it's ha it's hard to work two rods yeah, in a seaway. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yep. I'd like to, mate. <laughs> yeah. If you add anchor, definitely you could do it. Um, but um, then people throw rocks at you for anchoring yeah. up. But it's nearly yeah. hard enough if you got like a mate that wants to fish a plastic and a, you fish a live Excuse or whatever because everything sinks differently. Yeah. yeah. I just leave the motor running. I always just back up on my line, so I'm pretty vertical. Yeah. Yeah. So when I put a live on, with, so just imagine that's a little slimy, right? So it's actually a very big pilly. Um, it depends where you want to put your, your hooks, but I always run my first hook in the side, just past his dorsal fin here. I go about as far as, not quite his spine, and I just push it out and it sits out the side like that. I used to hook it through there, but the, it falls out, okay? It never falls out of here, ever. And the front one, I'll just run it through, or I'll go through the eyes like you were saying, mate, but I'll just go through his nose here, and that's, that's the rig. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, the trouble with like that is they do, they don't last long, they, they get, they can't breathe. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the fish too. If the fish are on, obviously that's good because it's quick. Yeah, yeah, the mullet will, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. But that's like the only way you can hook a pike. You can't go sideways. No, they just... No, you can't go through properly either. You get like, like some mullet, I'll hook up just through only. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Sorry about the blood, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, mullet are, are very hardy. Um, and mullet size, like it's all, it all depends what you can get from the start. If you've got little ones, that's what, that's what you're going to use, right? If you've got big ones, that's what you're going to use. Um, but if you want to get mullet at night time, so get, I haven't talked about the fish in the big chewies at seaway at night time, but um, we try to get mullet, we generally go out about, we want high tide about 8 or 9 or 10 at night when the boats are sort of settled down a bit. Later at night's better. Um, we're going to get the mud on there just not, we used to get mainly along the north side of uh, wave break and they get right up on the high tide up under the trees but you could try and get your car set in under the trees and uh, which is a little bit tricky but they're a good sized mullet or you just go along with the, with the torch until you see mullet jump and then throw your net you know. Yeah, it's plenty out in the Grand River. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah you don't want too big though like um, that's a that's, about, that's a really good size bait, live bait, you know. That? Yeah, it's why I say. <laughs> there are big jewies there. Yeah, 25 is good. And they were just stacked. Yeah, yeah. Twice that. Yeah, they're, they're stacked deep too, yeah. Turn around, come back and have another look because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah, yeah. Only had a cast Problem at night time is you've got dolphins. I caught quite a. Well, I'm caught dolphins, but. <laughs> they've grabbed my live bait. <laughs> they go hard. Stand the shade, yeah, that's right. Yeah, even at night time they get on the trees, especially at moonlight. Yeah, same deal, mate. Um, but um, Very hard to catch a mullet at night on a full moon. Very. They they're under the trees, though. Yeah. That's how we used to get them, yeah. As you, the man was saying. Yeah. Um, so generally do that. And um, But we'd fish um, with a, I'll just show you where, a really good spot at night time. And it still is a really good spot. So that's the south wall of Waybreak and the north wall of Waybreak. And I think there's a yellow boy about here somewhere. Um, so that's why we break and it sort of goes around like that. You've got those boats all moored at the back here. Um, under those trees along here, or there, sometimes in that little alcove here, there's a bit of weed bed here as well. And you get pike there sometimes as too, at night time as well. Um, but I'd be casting there. Get, I've caught squid in the cast in here too, in that area there. Um, and you'll get mullet also sit along the foreshore just in here. There's a tree that sits about there and they sit around that tree as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, you know where I'm talking about. Um, that but alcove, that alcove is a good spot. Yeah, it is a good spot. And, um, and generally I like um, that last hour or two of the run-ins. And sometimes we'll, gen we'll generally anchor up actually. So we'll anchor up sort of somewhere in this vicinity here. And I'll put live baits out here because it drops off quite deep along this edge here. Um, and a couple out here. And the tide sort of rips around like that. Um, but it pushes up onto here and it's like a little bit, always a little bit of an eddy here, run in and run out, sort of not too tidal. Um, and that's the area to fish. And on the run out, same scenario, the tide comes back out this way and you get a back eddy here. And it's nice fishing, it's flat always, it's calm, it's nice. And big jewies, big jewies. Caught big kings here too, but daytime on my baits. So I'd give that a go. Um, 
Yeah, otherwise the pipe's not too bad. Uh, the end of the north wall at night time, I've never really done much luck out there, eh? No. Daytime I do, but not night time. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on that at all, guys? Do you ever fish up near the fin at um, I haven't for a long time. Um, where we fish, we actually used to fish a bit up the back blocks up Tiger Mile Channel up the back there a little bit. Um, there's a bit of few deep holes up there. So, Mackenzie's. yeah, Mackenzie's just past just past Mackenzie's actually. Do you know that sort of area? Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight feet. Oh, see what you got one there? Yeah. Yeah. So where Wally's gutter comes out into Tiger Mullet Channel, if you know what I'm talking about, guys, there's an island here. Um, and then it goes through into Mackenzie's here. Um, this edge along here is quite deep. That's where we used to catch them along there. Right on that corner there, if you come back into Mackenzie's. There's a hole just here, mate? Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So you keep going down to the left, you've got that membership creek as well. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, so anywhere in that area there is good. It's where the bar's over here, you know, sort of thing. That that area is out of the current a little tiny bit. It still rips there, though. You get snapped um, on the other end of the Mackenzie's channel, though. I, I've caught snapper on plastics there, too, where the, where the beacons are. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Um, but, yeah, that's that's a good area there at night time. But I, I like the seaway better, and it's closer for me, too. Yeah. Do you find you get more of a pipe at night? A uh, pipe. The pipe. Oh, the pipes. Oh, yeah, the pipe, night time, yeah. hundred percent. So the pipe, pipe to wave break fishes better than the pipe to the end of the north wall. But during the day, pipe to the north wall fishes better. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, spot on. I'll just take my weight off that downrigger. Oh, uh, you could use a downrigger, hundred percent. It's pretty foolproof. If you're like um, fifty meters past, you drop your anchor, so you're going to be twenty meters off. Drop back. Yep, 100%. 100%, mate. Exactly right. So you just need to anchor up, though, or a spot lock, one of the two. So if you've got the luxury of using a downrigger, you can fish anything. Strong current, no current. But you've got to... I'm to show you how hard that current would be, because I've actually dived in there, so I know how hard it can be. Mm. That's the top of the tide. That's a slack tide. Yep. So you've got like an eight-pound... Ball. Yeah. Ball. That's still... Ripping yeah, out. ripping out. I've, yeah. I've Yes. Oh, flattened out for the current. Is that right, frisbee style? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, the current rips there. I've, I've dived there too, and I actually thought I knew where the dive boat was when I come up. It was like about 500 meters away. It was like, holy crap. <laughs> Looking for boats. Yes. Yes. Uh, 100%. As soon as it takes up, your line goes shook. So, but you can, but you could use a, an eight or ten ball on downrigger, and well, Ian's only using about a pound or two pound lead to hold the bottom. He's using those slide type sinkers. Yeah, yeah, he lets out. Eventually, you'll if you let that line, you eventually get to. But the secret these days is going thinner braid, thinner leader, thinner everything, less resistance, easier to fish with. And yeah. Oh wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you sit down in the lounge and watch the fish swim around. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's why you couldn't drink out of the water. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, you're right, mate. There's plenty of structure down there. Yeah. Okay, um, so we've covered vibes and soft plastics and rigs and bait going around. Um, so you all cool for inside, guys? Is that, you happy with that? Okay, yep. Okay, and... Um, Offshore. So offshore is the easiest way to catch big jewies, by far. The hardest thing offshore is getting the weather to go out there, especially at the moment. It is crap, as we all know. I would love to go on tonight, but we did the seminar because tonight I, I was talking to Stewie. I said it's the first time we've had like a five knot window at night time for and no swell since I can remember. Red and sorry, mate. Right? The red sky tonight. Oh, the red oh, sky tonight. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. It's got Night Fisherman's Delight, is that how it goes? No, the swell's actually, um, it picked up a bit out wide, but not in close. Yeah. I think it's only, I didn't check to, uh, this afternoon, I think it's about a metre, and about one and a half in sets, but you got high tide at like 
10 or something, so you can fish. Well, you get your bag in about three seconds. So you don't fish it. Yeah, I was going to get Stuart to do it, actually. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. And then I've got all my mates going out tomorrow, or Stu's mates yeah. as well. We had about 30 invitations today. But um, we'll work tomorrow anyhow. That's what it is. Yeah. And the catch and fish out there, which makes it even worse. Uh, but, okay, do fish at night time and afternoon and daytime for offshore. Um, you will catch them in the morning, uh, early morning, and you will catch them up. I've caught them all day, actually, but you get a morning bite, but by far the best bites when the sun sets. It's number one. So you'll be out there, it doesn't matter if you're on the 12 Fathom Reef or the 17, 18 Fathom Reef or on the blocks or on some wreck. As soon as that sun sits, you sit there, three baits out, three guys, all three live baits are sitting there, nothing. And then as soon as that sun goes down behind the mountain, it's like, oh, I can feel it. And another guy's, oh, oh I've got a bite too. Oh, I've got a bite. It's like, boom, 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 bang, and next to the whole three built up. And that's what it's like. It's just instant, as soon as that sun goes down, it's like, like clockwork. And, uh, and I'm troubled, as I said, with Julie's got two, so only 15, 20 minutes, and you've got to go home. So she bagged out. And the fish are all metre 20, metre 30. They're big. So if you want to get a big Dewey, and as long as your boat, like, I always get my little four metre tinny at night time, but you've got to know what you're sort of doing. Um, I still get them the four and a half metre tinny now. <laughs> Upscale, but it's got the bills from going all the time. But yeah, um, but yeah, you just got to know what you're doing because at night time, you got, especially this time you've got Wesley's come up, make sure there's no Wesley coming up. Even though you're on, say, 18 fathoms, you're about three or four k's offshore, uh, a 25 knot Wesley's quite rough out there at night time. Okay? Um, if you're only in 12 fathom reef or in on some wreck very close, um, you're generally not too bad. So it's always a good idea to go out on a windy day, it sounds stupid in a westerly and know where the depth of where your limit is. Does that make sense? So you've got some idea what it's going to be like. I have to swell the signal size. Because um, if you get caught there at night time, you think, OK, I'm only going to go 1K in, it's going to be good, I'll be, I'll be right. Because it is a bit stressful at night time. You get a bit orientated. And um, you put your head down, put your heads up, and the lights, the boats merge around this way, and you think, oh, where am I? <laughs> so you'll all get that sort of feeling. Um, but once you get used to it, you, it's easy. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. But just don't have your GPS on the circle thing. I have mine north facing up, so I don't consider myself going around in circles. My head's going around in circles. <laughs> By the way, who uses, who uses the continuously moving GPS on plotter? Please don't. Yeah, good. It's true. I love it, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I still teach you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The other thing is just watch out for um, speed bumps this time of year. Out yeah. there, whales, they're big, they don't move real so, fast. And I could tell you, tell you my gosh, <laughs> I could tell you a lot of whale stories at night time. Sorry for the green there again. But um, they're not speedy bumps, they're actually nice animals, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll take back what I said the other day. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we were fishing um, on the blocks northeast, which you guys have got in your GPS sheet, which we'll run through later. And um, the Jewies are on, we pulled up, and Jack and I both got one, my son Jack and I got one straight away. Dropped back down again, um, I think I got one, Jack dropped one. And we could hear the whales talking as a glass out. And it's pitch black, there's no moon this night. So we go, whenever the weather's good, we don't care about the moon so much. It's, it does, is an advantage, uh, but it's not a necessity. It's just getting the weather, and you've got the right bait, and off you go. And, um, and then um, it was pitch black. Like you could see the lights at the surface, but you couldn't see anything else. And then we got wet and a big splash, and one jumped out right next to us and wet us. And we crapped ourselves. Jack's line was still out. I was already driving forward off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to slow down. <laughs> we drove about a K and then he went his line up. We had three fish in the boat, I think it was. Um, and then um, we went back around. After about half an hour, we said, they've got to be gone now. Let's go back because the fish are on the bite. So we went back and um, dropped down again. I think I lost one. Jack got a real good one, mid 28 or something like that. Um, and then put it in the boat, and then um, the whales come back again, and they wet us again, got wet again. They were just yeah, yeah they were playing with us, <laughs> exactly right. And this time we got real wet, and the splash was huge, and it really scared us. So we'd done the run, Jack was trying to get the hooks out of the fish's mouth at the front of the, the tin, he's got a casting platform. Anyhow, we just put the bolt all the way home, got home. And that's what size boat? 4.8 metre tinny, I got it. And anyhow, 
got home and uh, my Jack goes, Dad, there's only three fish. So his fish actually bounced out of the boat because I was going that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, a, it was a scary time. And this has happened to us maybe two or three times now. I've had other customers who had a similar scenario. So you have to be really careful of the whales, especially in a little boat. Though he's, you might have saw a couple of those boats on Facebook recently on news that got smashed by boats. Um, I, I think it's accidental, but um, I'd be really careful because at night time, there's only you out there. But at night time, you must always call the Coast Guard or, or BMR or whatever. BMR because the Coast Guard closed at 7, I think. Um, to tell me you're out there, because if you're not back on time, we, say, we can go looking for you after about half an hour, an hour. So, and um, if, if you haven't got a, a radio, just use your phone. Okay. Just let them know where you go, what time you're going to be back. Yeah. Really important. How long does it take you to get the rock from Speedway? Uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, no, so it's close. About 15 if, if it's a tiny bit of chop. It's close. And the beauty, there's a lot of blocks. You have courage, you mate, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of blocks there, and... Um, there's, the unfortunate part is that everyone knows about now, we've been there for years, but you go to there now, there might be, on um, one of the good blocks, there might be six boats on it, and you go to the next block, because there, there are a couple of k's apart, some of them, and look at the distance, and it's not quite da uh, dark, so no one's got their lights on, and I'm always running late. So I go, okay, get to the next one. So we zoom down there, and you get there, and you go, oh shit, there's three boats on this little crap. So you go to the next one, so I think you've got six on there that I've given you. Um, actually, I'll do it now while we've got this here. If you want to grab that sheet out. And anyone that's seen Doug drive knows that he's flat out everywhere, so it's probably about 20 minutes. <laughs> double it. Just double T it. Time yeah. is the essence. You're free. Um, <laughs> yeah. 27.52. Um, there's, I think, six marks there. All those 27.52 ones. They're all within the same vicinity of about uh, roughly about two mile, so four k's, and there's in between. So who here doesn't have a boat to go fishing offshore? Who here doesn't fish offshore? Well, I don't have a boat to go offshore. But... You have all jet ski? Yeah. Yeah. So I got a couple of mates fish jet ski at night time offshore. I got a boat, but you know, yeah, you got to get an eighty six twenty work on it there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. starting to hit offshore. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, pin bar's a bit dangerous at the moment, though. It's a bit all over the joint. Yeah, yeah, it is always fit, but it's worse at the moment. But um, very shallow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then go all the way back up again. Yeah, that's right. Well, the dragon where you are is really good fishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the dragons are go. Um, you fish, uh, the fish is good during the day too. But guys, um, just getting back to the scenario at night time. So here's, here's my plan. Try and be on the water by 4. Try and be at the bait spot by about 4.20. And try and be at the... By 5.20 yeah, now. So 5.20 it's dark, right? 5.20, that's when they come on the bite. And you could be back home having a beer at 6.30 when they're on. Yeah, because you're bagged out. So that's the scenario. So that's uh, water, bait. Allow yourself half an hour to get bait and be on the spot. So you got, it, from, from where you get, you get the bait at the spot actually. Um, but I find for some reason, um, it puts, I don't know, it puts the fish off a bit, I think. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, so I like to get bait on the way to the spot, if that makes sense. And generally I get to the spot too, sometimes where I want to get my bait, there's two boats sitting on it, so. As long as you get no bait, you bait jigs out night all right? No, nah, I hate it. You'll get yeah, tail though, yeah. 35 centimetre tail is really good. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> 38, 38, 40. Sorry, mate. No, oh, afternoon, okay. afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Morning time. So, so to get fish on, you will get yakkers then on bait at night, uh, bait jigs at night, but you need to use um, like a little bit of pilchard on each hook. Yeah. Just cut a little slither and put it on each hook and, uh, and tend to fish it, not so much jerking like a bait jig, just sort of fish it like you're bottom fishing. You feel bite and catch them, you know? Yeah, no, I thought you'd go yeah. in the morning. No, but no. morning's that scenario too. Yeah. 
The ideal yeah. scenario is how many people you live on the water? For those who live on the water. Okay, you're, you're a lucky gentleman. Yeah, yeah, on the boat it's even better. <laughs> but if you've got that, you have a pen at home and you get your liveys and just keep them swimming around all the time. It'll all die because there's too much fresh water in the water. But, um, and you just grab out 20 and off you go. Yeah, yeah you can go anytime you want then. Go out in the dark. Um, I find you still get them in the late hour or even the Scottish Bridge. Yeah, you will. You get them up till dark, mate. Up till dark. Oh, yeah, okay. Scott, are you mean in the dark or just before yeah, dark? Just yeah, yeah. You will get them at the bait grounds. Yeah. Top of that prince, they're generally small. That's the problem. They don't mind small ones, but if you've got bigger ones, they'll work really well. I know uh, some days we can't get bait. We've had to bait fish and we caught, you know, the red mullet or, um, what do you call them? Uh, goat fish, yeah, goat fish. And smashed big jewies. We got actually two over a metre 25 on one goat fish. Because that's all we could get. And it's so best bait. They're slimy mackerel. They're slimies. Yeah. Owen Taylor, 35 plus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, mate. Big, yeah. big pike aren't too bad, but they're not as good. No, no, no Taylor will kill it. So is slimy. Yeah, pike's really yeah. good in the bar, don't get me wrong. But out there, um, no, I'll eat it, but they, they love Taylor and slimies. Yeah. So if Taylor dies, you're better off. Building it, so so we've been in that scenario too, where we can't get enough live baits. We've got a few tailor, a couple of bigger ones that might be forty, which are a bit big. So we just fill it them, cut the fillet on two angles, two slices, two two out of one fillet, and drop it on um, hooks like that. Drop it down straight away, mate. Boom, boom, bang, they're on. And it's just a boom, boom, bang. That's how it is. Boom, boom, bang. You feel you feel fish go like that, and then you feel like a, like a grunt, like a crushing sort of feeling. It yeah, it's, it's like one, two, and then it's whack, and you whack, and just make sure your drag set right. Um, I do use my heavier rod, which Stewie's got there. This is one of the many heavy rods I've got, but that sort of thing there, it's got 80 pound braid on it, um, because swimming fish, especially the blocks, and some of the reefs out in the 18s and 17s, as I said, they, they go in the block. Those blocks, to give you some idea about the size of this room, maybe. Uh, have you ever dived there at all, mate? No. No, I haven't dived there yet either, but um, they're meant to be I think around four metres by four metres and they're square with, and they're about six or eight metres long. I've seen photos, Ian Banks has mm. yeah. And they go in, inside and cut you off on the pipe, you know, or on, on the outside. And um, so you've got to hold them out. Uh, and the fish at night time tend to really fight hard. So I guess they've got sharks up their arse somewhere else. So they need, you need Would to. You 80 pounds there? Would you have got as a uh, 80 pounds as well. 80 pound, okay. Yeah, 80. Yeah, and I'm using a nine ball. I don't want that fish to swim back up to me and hide in the boat. I was wanting to stay in the, in the zone. Yeah, and my drag set, like it's pretty tight. I mean, really tight, because I want a turning, yeah. Don't you fear slimies? What uh, sort of um, bait hooks do you uh, I use 7 which you guys have got. That's my popular size, um, because slimies are all different sizes. Um, and sometimes we can't get slimes, so I use what well, pillies, whatever I can get. You know, pillies, they die pretty quick though, but. They're better than nothing. Um, or little yakkers. If I use eights, um, I have, a, as I say, I have a lot of rigs rigged up. So my eights, uh, and I've got tens as well, are for the bigger slimies or bigger tailor. Um, but when you get a little slimy or yakker that big, you can't even put an eight, it's too big. And I think they notice it. The sevens, they sort of hug it, not too bad. Yeah, yeah so. so as, a, as a dead bait, a strip bait's better than a. Uh, strip bait, um, yeah, that's a good question too. When I got live, I'll have that live. Yeah, um, but yeah, but yeah, dead live. Yeah, dead <laughs> yeah, okay. A strip bait's better than a dead live. How's that sound? Definitely. Or a butterfly. Cut out its backbone. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, say, uh, yeah that, yeah, that works well too. And one thing I really do with the boat is I will always because um, at night time there's not much wind normally, right? And not much drift. And if you got the spot lock out there, you can spot lock at night time because there's not much current, so it's pretty well straight down. Um, so what I'll do is I will fish live bait in their hands and I'll always drop a, um, the baits that go dead, I'll fill them and I'll put two fillets out up the front of the boat on the rod holder, yep. set with the drag, still pretty tight, my rod's like, you know, snapping, got to try and get them out of the rod holder. Yep. Um, but it, it goes off quite often as well. Yeah, mm. cool. Don't waste it. More lines the merrier, more baits the merrier too. <laughs> but one thing I want to do this year, which I haven't done yet, is I want to use like these big 
some other vibes this sort of size. I'm going to try it at night time because I reckon the just the action's got to stir them up, right? And these are Berkeley product, the cheapest chips. And uh, I reckon they'll be really, really good. Um, the other thing too is daytime. So um, imagine that's daytime we're talking now, which we were talking about before. Um, quite often, um, if we got bait slept over for the night before and I'm not crazy to go fishing, if I've got time the next morning and, and can get up, I'll grab one of my boys and we'll zoom out and um, at that sort of time of morning, but we'll use the liveys uh, left over from the night before and um, get there and everyone's sort of sitting there trying to wait for the sun to come up to get liveys. We'll drop down liveys and pull deweys in front of them. They hate it. <laughs> and the deweys will bite really well to about 6.30, even yeah, in the daylight. Sun up, sun up. Sun up about maybe for like uh, 20 minutes, half hour. Actually, Stuart and I were yeah. wine. How many get that? We four or five? Year, uh, it was like six. Six, yeah, it was a bag of them. <laughs> there was three of us and we yeah. got six in, yeah. Yeah. Two and hours was, or whatever. Two about four to seven, maybe seven o'clock. Yeah. yeah. So they'll bite really good in the morning too. Yeah. So Sunday morning I might actually be up that way having a look, I think. Because it looks good Sunday morning. But similar time. You want to be out there fishing before daylight. Yeah. So in that scenario you get your bait on the spot? Uh, you will, but not to daylight if you haven't got it prior. Yeah. So a lot of guys will go out Saturday afternoon and get their bait. Mm. And um, if they've got some mate lives on a jetty or so, on a canal, <laughs> keep it his house in a bucket or something. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, they'll try and keep in it in a bait tank. Would you just spray the cast and see if you get some mullet or something like that? Uh, I've no, used mullet out there, never caught fish on a mate. Yeah. I promise you. I don't think I've ever I've caught mackerel and marlin on rig mullet with the backbone taken out and swimming, but I've never caught a, li a bait on a live mullet yeah. in my life on the ocean. Yeah, not offshore. Inside's no. really good, not offshore, but yeah. Weird. I don't know why. No, that's but, yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah. Do you use your gar out there or whatever? Our gar would work, I think, 100%. Yeah. yeah. You're saying mullet, yeah. like seaway, yeah? Yeah. 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 Head out so, of the cave, no. Yeah, no. Right. It's like off the wall, two heads, not up the seaway. Yeah. <laughs> On Lewis. Best, one of the best days outside fishing when we went out to Sully's. We got four during 20 minutes, all on mullet. All on mullet. On a whole no, mullet, mate? No, no, the whole mullet, but we... Um, you filled them? No, or butterfly? butterfly? Yeah, butterfly is a different story. I, I think that'll work, yeah. But not live, not two, live. Two drifts, four during or home. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's like on the flocks. Yeah, same scenario. Or the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know if that's on here, actually. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, getting back to the daytime, so when they go off the bite in the morning, and we've got a couple of customers, Mick Horn and um, a few other guys that will fish um, like octo jigs, this sort of thing here, and, bla and uh, see? yeah, octo jigs, the Shimano style, that sort of thing. He catches them on those, uh, and also on um, micro jigs, which... I uh, like this sort of thing here, like that sort of thing. Yeah, one of those things, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whichever. I ran that sort of 80, 100 gram size, 60 to about 120 actually. Uh, it is very good. And just slow lifting it and letting it flutter back down. Is that the same market? Same area, mate, same yeah. area, yeah. So for the people that like getting up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yes, <laughs> gentlemen <laughs> ours. <laughs> yeah, do that, mate, do that. And like you'll, you'll always get like a, um, I'll just show, show you this, how it sort of works. I'll rub that off so it doesn't confuse the matter. Let's just say uh, tomorrow, for example, I think, is it hot time about 10 tomorrow? Or 9.30? No, it's about 10. <laughs> okay, so let's say tomorrow morning's high tide about 10, right? And you've got moon rising, I think, tomorrow at about 9.30. And daylight's at about 6.15. So you'll definitely get a bite around that time to maybe 7 a.m. It might go a little bit quiet for an hour or so, and then you'll definitely get a bite when the moon rises on the horizon, and that'll cover the high tide as well, and that'll go to probably around 10.30, and then it'll be about an hour slack, and then at two hours after 10, which is 12, this is the hot bite, will go to about two. So you got like three bite periods, um, in that, in that scenario. Why? 
It's the law of fish. <laughs> the law of fish. <laughs> so, um, in, in this particular time here, how do we had high tide at midday? You probably could scrub that out. You won't get a bite, really. You might get a bite Just on the, the high tide rise. at midnight yeah. or the moonrise, but you'd definitely get a bite two hours after midday, so two to four, it lasts for two hours. That's mandatory. It just happens every tide, okay? And uh, if you follow Windy, which is an app, uh, that sort of gives you a... a uh, does anyone follow Windy at all? Yeah. The little fish? Yeah, the little fish scale up. Yeah, tomorrow's a little skinny little, like a campuchin fish, yeah. little skinny one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but when there's like three big fat ones there, that, that's the one. We were out uh, a couple of Fridays ago. Oh, was it Friday? Monday. Mondays yeah, ago. Yeah. Last week, Monday might have been. Two yeah. Mondays. Two Mondays ago. Yeah. And um, the fish, well, there was three fat fish all day. And I promise you, from the time we got out to the, to the time we come back, no matter where we went, they bit all day. And, uh, and there were periods at that two hours after and the high tide and, and the moon rising and all that sort of crap, they bit better again than what they were already biting. The last three days have been three fish. Has it? Yeah, okay. But they're going off now, I think. Yeah. Comes back up next week, sort of Tuesday, oh, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there will still be fish out there. Yeah, we did that a, a few weeks ago. We went out, uh, it was a skinny fish and the bite time was, um, it was actually, Friday a month ago with Tony. Yeah, it was really late. Yeah, it was late. Yeah. It was about uh, a similar, about a one to three o'clock bite or two to four o'clock bite. And we had like eight pearlies with four, four or five of us fishing for six hours. And then um, and then at three o'clock, whambo, so that time, that two hours after high tide, they just come on and we load it up in two hours. Yeah. Two hours after tide, did you Time as well, yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're fishing in the Hins Dam or wherever it is, it's always two hours after high tide. That's your number one. I try and teach you guys that as much as I can. <laughs> Day, night, doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's not specifically a tide, it's a, it's the time after a tide. But you will get a high tide bite, low tide bite, yeah. last run out bite. Um, but there will be times in that six hours of the tide running that it'll be just crap, that is one bite. So maybe two hours here and two hours there. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we've got a bit covered there, Stewie. Um, so catching live bait, there's an art to catching live bait, guys, too. Uh, have we got that bait rod there? Sorry. Uh, this is a bait jig rod, um, but any rod will work. Now, these normally have a reel attached, but we haven't put the reel on here because I haven't got the reel time to do it today. We just grabbed it tonight. Stewie just finished rigging up before you guys come in. But inside there is a bait jig. Okay, so on this sort of rod here, this is made for an overhead, this one, and we're out of the spin ones. We sell lots and lots of these because they're so good. You could just wind the bait jig up inside and chuck it from the cab or in your boat anyway. It doesn't hook up, which is a pain in the ass, right? Um, so when you, on this one here, you use like a, a bait caster to about a TLD 15 size, if you know what that is, in the real size. Um, and and the, when you wind it up, it just goes back, back inside. Quite easy. Oops. Sorry. Caught up here. No, they don't because it won't fit inside. Oh, there is actually. Make, there's a, yeah, they yeah, make one, but you one. can only fit a size eight or smaller. Eight or ten. So it's no good for offshore. Oh, it's, oh it's eight's a bit right. Light offshore stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not slimies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they yeah, work but they well, work well. You feel though. a lot. You feel yeah. it. It'll yeah. be like that on there. You'll know you load it up. Yeah. 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 Don't worry. It took me a while to get that pass out. Cause it's like a, a real light, sloppy rod, you know. Yeah. And uh, but no, they, def they definitely work. Yeah. How long is that? Uh, uh, seven, seven foot, but it stows away in the yeah. in the boat, pretty easy. Yeah. They're about sixty bucks or something, like that. sixty-five yeah. bucks. Um, but anyhow, they're good. They're a good thing. Sorry, Stu. Yeah, my arms are on. Um, boys, what size hooks do you have for targeting your slimies there? A six, preferably. Six. Um, eights are okay, as Stuart was saying, but six is the better one. It'll normally be a bit stronger line as well. Um, and I tend to like that green film. Actually, you've got one there in a packet at all, so you can pass it around. Yep. Just pass, I'll pass around a six and an eight. Yeah, so you said, yeah. like yuckers, I use an eight, slime is a six. Put it there somewhere. 
Oh, something, something's really caught up here. Yeah. With the reel, it's much easier. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's true. Play that. Are yours, true? Thanks, man. <laughs> but there's a secret to using bait jigs, guys, and that secret is um, I'll show you on, on the here. So, it's just, this is your sounder screen, right? And this is the bottom, a little bit of pinnacle here. And let's just say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters deep. And let's just say the baits in this area here, which is between 20 and 30 meters. So always use colored braid, very important when you're using a bait jig. And you just let it go hell for leather down, one color, two colors. When it gets to two colors, you grab the line. And then for the next 10 meters, as it zips from 10 to 20 to 30, it's going to that third color, because it's every 10 meters it's colored, right? As it's going down, you say, grab it, let it go, grab it, let it go. It looks like that. Dun, 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 dun. And just, it'll stop, it'll be loaded up. But if you just let the sinker fall through there and then jerk the slack, you get crap all. Yep. You've got to really work it through this area here. Yeah, you just catch mm. red rock cod and all the little. Yeah, that's crap. right. Yeah. 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 So just try that next time you're out using a bait jig. And you've got to use a decent sized sinker. Like I've tried, yeah. if they're suspended, say at 20 metres, is a real little sinker and you think I'm going to float this down and smash mm, them. They don't like you're it. You're getting none. No. You need a big sinker. Yeah. Yep. So here's a five, six ounce in yeah. 20 metres of water. Do you zoom your sounder in to the bottom or anything? Uh, for bait, it's not that important. Um, if the bait's hugging the bottom down here, which sometimes it does, because it might be the predators around, uh, yeah, I'll zoom in a bit to see I mean, it. Yes, general, general fishing. Oh, uh, for jewies, not really. Jewies are one of those fish that talk and don't like sonar too much. I'm not a, I keep my sounder going most of the time, all the time. But for jewies and pearlies is one of the two fish that they both got that same bladder, air bladder thing, and they grunt, 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 they talk. And if you drop one, they, they just go off the bike. Yeah, that's it. yeah. so they talk. So um, my suggestion is um, not to have your sound on too much. Use your GPS once you're at the spot. Yeah, just for juice. Stamp, I don't care. Yeah. Can you see them on the sound? Yeah, you do. So. Um, how it looks exactly, um, let's just say, actually use the ribbon. Red's a bait, right? So let's just say the bait's really thick here. And then there's more bait around here. Right? And the jewies will look They'll be, actually, I've got a blue penny, I'll use a blue, because that's how they come up normally, but they'll be like in there. Like that sort of thing. So you're more like looking for separation in the bait. Yeah, 100%, they'll split it. Yeah. Um, but you'll see like different colour to the bait in there and it's quite a decent size. Because okay. in such shallow area, it's quite zoomed out, right? Um, so you don't need to zoom in 50 metres. I have caught jewies up off Morton in 120 metres, believe it or not. Um, but, and out here I've caught them out to about 105 metres off a pin, 110. Um, but they're generally in sub 50 metres. Yeah. But that's how they'll look on the sounder. Or they might, there might not be much bait and they might just be sitting, sitting you know, on that pinnacle there. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see them out, out in the middle of nowhere. So. A lot of the time, and I think this guy's got sounders going, so the blocks I fish a lot of, so always referring back to the blocks, but um, sometimes there'll be four or five boats there and you just can't quite get on there. You'll see the guy on the blocks pulling one of them in, a jewy, but, and when you get a time to go past and I'm, the boat might be from here, the wall away, how you going, mate? And look at the sound, <laughs> I can see the jewies, but they're not really happening. A lot of time I've drifted past the guys because they're on spot lock. And, um, and I'll drift past and I could be a hundred metres away but they can't quite see me and they'll be like that on the bottom, they'll look like that. And the next minute, wham, bam, we're, we're into them because they've just shied away from the sounders. Or one of the guys might have, oops. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> or one of the guys might have um, um, dropped a fish and they've gone off the bite a bit and, uh, on that pinnacle, right? Or on that block. So don't be shy to look around a hundred or two hundred metres past the reef that you actually, on those areas I give you there, have a look around a little bit. Because sometimes you're out in the flats, so chasing bait out here, 
or whatever. I've caught them on um, the, the dive. You get all those whiting at night time, the dive, uh, uh, offshore whiting, and they're quite decent, like 20 centimetres, 25. And I've caught them on those at night time. They smash those too. Mm. So you're more so looking for the dewy marks themselves than the bait or the structure already? Uh, looking for the a structure first, then the dewy's on the structure, or bait's not a necessity. Sometimes bait's hard to get. Um, so as long as you've got your bait prior to that, it's it, you know. Um, otherwise, you'd be looking for the bait too. Um, but on the way to the box. Um, yeah, so I, I just normally hit the Aquarius, the wreck just on the other side of Dead Man's there. Yeah. And you get pike, you get tailor, you get slimies there, you get everything there, pilchards. Yeah. It's all there. Uh, it's called the Aquarius. It's a, a trawler wreck on Dead Man. So the only hassle is if it's because it's. If you got under a metre or well, 1.2 metres and under, you can actually zoom across the dead man's. Over 1.5, you've got to go all the way around and come back in again. Um, I haven't got the mark. I've got the mark on there. Yeah, I've got oh. the marks downstairs. I'll give them to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the spot to go to, and that's where we want to get our bait. Sometimes bait's hard to get north, and I've got to go down to, like, John's saying, fall down to the Scottish Prince and get it, and then um, come back here. Yeah. Sully's always has bait, so, and generally it does in most places at the moment. There's a lot of bait around the moment too. Yeah. So at the front here, the 12 Fathom Reef, um, which is just off SeaWorld, the fish is really good in the afternoon and early morning. Uh, 17 Fathoms, uh, which is uh, that 27.55, which is under the 27.52. The 27.55 and the next two, uh, three, or two 56s, they're all very similar area. Um, and uh, they tend to fish really good. They're at the northern end of the 18s and 17 fathom reefs. They fish really good um, early morning. Um, I know Wayne, Wayne uh, what's his name? Catch of the whiting. Young. Youngie. Yep. Uh, he fishes a lot in that area there for jewies at uh, this time of the year in the morning. Yeah. Gentleman's hours too, by the way, mate. <laughs> He's there like 8 or 9 o'clock and catches them, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but all those spots, we've pretty caught jewies all the way through there. Yeah, so give them all a go, put them all in, see where they are. You'll catch snapper as, as other, and other things in those places as well. Lots of big shovel nose, they're a pain in the backside, but they're good fun, but they go hard. Um, and just watch out for the whales, that's the main mm -hmm. thing I can tell you. Um, make sure you get a good sized fillet knife, guys. Jewies have different fillets of mackerel and stuff like that, so your mackerel are, um, get this a squiggle out again. So the mackerel are, are like um, sort of this sort of shape fish, quite thin, uh, where jewies are quite fat, if that makes sense. So you, you, need, a, you need a long fillet knife. <laughs> the fillets are really deep. Uh, the jewies are a little bit harder to gaff, their skin's quite leathery, quite tough. So, uh, and they've got quite decent sized scales. So, Make sure you gaff sharp. That's very, very important. Uh, I don't know how many people I've seen lost big jewies at the gaff. But generally, after you give them a bit of curry, or they give you a bit of curry, you get them to the top, they'll float belly up and they grunt, 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 grunt. Uh, but they do have a second wind, they'll take it back off again. So you have to hit them with the gaff at that exact point. Um, hit them around the head area. Um, but as I said, the scales are quite big. So if you hit a mackerel, it's, it just goes straight in there. No scales and it's soft skin. Hit a jewey, it's like going through leather. Through the scales like armour, then through the leather, so you could have a very sharp gaff. Uh, not the size we get. <laughs> no, no, if you do, yeah, no, if you do net, actually, that uh, that black one there, I was going to show you that you want at least, like this is small, you need at least net. that size. Yeah, baronet's what you want. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I gaff them, mate, because they generally they got that they come up belly up, it's just offshore, because it's a little bit deeper, and they generally, um, they blow their bladder. Okay, um, just another thing too, you know the, the wind tube in their, in their bladder, which is a very expensive Chinese bike for like 800 bucks a kilo or something, <coughs> excuse me, what you do is you um, dry that out, so you dry it out in the, in the fridge or wherever, in the sun, whatever, whatever, keep the flies off it. <laughs> and you dry it out and then you cut it and open it up so it's dry. So actually cut it and dry it and before you uh, dry it. It's like a sheet. And then you cut it into strips and then you uh, quickly boil it like chips. 
and it's, it tastes like exactly like uh, pork crackling, if, if you eat the pork. Unbelievable. Uh, for, I'm, I think 800 bucks or something. It's <laughs> expensive. <laughs> But I, I tried some recently yeah. on a mate's boat and I could not believe it. I thought it was prawn crackle, prawn crackle ones. Yeah, it was dewy intestine. Yeah. Which is swimbladder. Swimbladder, swim correct, yeah. yeah. That's right, exactly, yeah. Don't waste anything. Um, I think that's about, probably about it, guys. Uh, there's lots of other lures you can cast off the rocks. But this, if you go down south, um, the, those cross, uh, crossfires, are they? Crossfire. Yeah, bent minnows, they're yeah, pretty ben popular. Um, get big heavy things like this Japanese style. Um, you can get big soft plastics, which I think would maybe work, like that type of thing there. I'll just put a three ounce jig head on it and go hard. Um, it's probably about all I've got to show you, I think. And anyway, everything we've told you tonight, you're going to get lots of fish, hopefully. So, dewy time, it starts now, or it's already started, but it goes for the next sort of three months to about August. Okay? Just be careful of those whales at night time, though, especially driving in the dark. There's no moonlight. Yeah, have someone that's got good eyesight and wild alert. <laughs> and keep your eyes peeled. And I wouldn't go, I wouldn't, I don't drive over. Like, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I was going to say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive over about maybe 35, 40 k's an hour at night time, unless you know what you're doing. And be careful of the seaway. Guys, you need, if you're going to get night time, please watch, um, just click on the Wave Rider Boys Seaway and look what the swell's doing. Before you go out in the afternoon, look what it's doing if you're going to go out in the morning early than dark and see what the swell is. Like, anyone go out last Saturday in that big swell? Anyone here go out? You're all smart. If you guys did and couldn't get back in and stuff like that, it was pretty hairy. Yeah. So That's just be careful. Seen shallow on the south wall? Yep. Yep. That would out of there. Yep. Have they come out? Don't know. Probably not. Don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think they're hoping they'll go naturally. Sorry, mate. Yeah, stick to the north, and then, then there's another big bank on the north side. Too, so you're going to get a dog leg southeast. Yeah, just be careful. It came yeah. Up on the when I the yeah, that's right. It comes up. You'll see it. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit closer in to what they say. We went out, um, as I said, a couple of Mondays ago, yeah. and um, it was it was, a, yeah, it was on a Monday because Sunday afternoon I went down. Yeah, yeah it was Sunday was huge. was huge. It was like four meters, five on the sets, whatever. And it was massive and it was just breaking. And I went down Sunday afternoon to have a look at it. It dropped down to about three. It was still every second wave would break. I thought, there's no way it's going to drop off by the morning. We're going to go out in the dark at 4 a.m. We said, nah, we're not going to go out till 5.30 to wait till it's good. just see a little tiny bit. So we get to the seaway and there was about six other boats sitting there waiting for mm -hmm. doing the same thing. And then it's about quarter to six, just a little tiny bit of light. And, and then you could feel the boat wasn't as bad and then, um, I jumped on the thing and I looked and it was about a metre and a half, two metres. It wasn't too bad, but still you had to be careful, you know. So as soon as we got enough daylight, we checked out and we'd done a runner. Um, so you just got to wait, but it did drop. Like on the screen, it went like that down to like one and a half metres from four and a half, you know. What size Overnight. Uh, that was a 30 foot boat that day, but um, my boat's just a 4.8 metre tinny. Yeah. Once you swell limiting that. Um, on the run out tide, maybe 1.8. On the run in, two and a half. But you've got to know what you're doing. And it's fast. So, just, and yeah, and it doesn't broach. And getting a boat that doesn't broach is the most important thing you ever do if you're buying a boat. It can't go down a wave and then shoot off that way or that way. That's downright dangerous. You want it to go down and ride and pop back up. Because that way, in night time, you don't have to stress about it doing that. Because night time, it's scary shit. Yeah. Yep. So I went across and was like, just curious at how shallow that's getting. It's I did. like three metres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Jesus, I don't know how it come up. Yeah, well, so Maybe I think... It was only 10 metres straight. Yeah, something on the side, that's right. So it, um, I think a wave needs um, less than half to break. So if it's two metres and you get a, a 0.8 metre wave, it'll break in two metres, you know? Yeah. So it's about a third, I think. So if it's three metres and you've got theoretically a metre, 1.2, it will break on there, you know? Yeah, it's that's sort of, not, not a seaway anymore, <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not at the moment, hopefully it gets better. Um, any questions guys?
find if you're fishing in a certain structure, a pinnacle or a block mm. or whatever, that they'll be on a certain edge? Yeah, that that's a good question. They follow the bait around a little bit. Um, they could be on that block at that time or, um, or the boats want to scare them over that area over there, that part of the reef. Um, but generally speaking, um, if the bait's there, they'll, they'll stay there. Yeah, un un unless you've lost one, they do talk, as I say. They they'll might move away a little bit because his mate said, warning, warning. You know? <laughs> I don't know how it works. Yeah, it's really weird how, they, how it works, but they, they definitely, as my mate said, they definitely um, talk. Mm. But I don't, yeah, there's a bit of that too. They will only, about 20 minutes, and they, they go back to biting again. Not, not all night, just for a little bit. You're fishing inside on anchor. Yes. Would you fish with bait runners or anything like that? Do you start um, to run? Yeah, so, uh, like, if, if I'm fishing at the back of, say, um, Tiger Mullet, that area, yeah, 100%. If you've got bait <coughs> runners, that's fine, mate. Because, but I don't let them run. I, 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 I like to have the drag fairly locked up. Not locked up, but tight. I've got a solid boat. I was holding that fishing club and they fish with all the algae and stuff. Mm. And they let them walk off with it. Mm. Yeah, that's how they used to do it. Um, we don't do it anymore. That's that, that's the old style. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all different now. Like I reckon those guys would have caught a lot more fish if they had to strike it back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, I don't. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're good. They're good, but fish are easier to catch back then. I was around those days too, so <laughs> I know. Uh, but. Um, yeah, it's everything's changed, and and their boom boom bang is the way they hit them, hit them hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and same in the rod holes. I fish it quite tight. No bait runner is fairly tight. I got bait runner reels. Don't get me wrong, but uh, and for jewies that they were always a, a go to back in the day. But um, I don't let them run anymore. No. Yeah, give it a shot. See you go. Yeah. yeah. And you catch them? No, I'll lose them all. Okay, no, I still stick with the new method. <laughs> yeah. Well, but maybe better hooks. I don't know what your hooks are using. Go away from circles. Don't use too big a hook. Lighter leader. Yeah, it all helps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? So, Sunday looks all right, guys. Okay. Sunday morning at this stage. Tomorrow's obviously the day. But, uh, I've only got about a four hour window, so I'll go out at about 4.30 and come back at about 8.30 and I'll probably go, um, I'm debating mackerel, snapper, Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mackerel and the snapper are together, the Jew is separate. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to sort of go that way, that way. So I'll be up to the blocks or out the front on the diamond there. There's a few mackerel yeah. out there too. Yeah, they smashed it today again, they bagged out again today. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah. many. What do they do yeah. that's on the reef month today? Uh, trolling, live baits. Yeah, down deep. Yeah. We should get them to hard bodies too, but um, we'll probably troll hard bodies a little bit on Sunday if we go out, yeah. Morning. Yeah. But um, I think you better go. Okay, we'll do the draw at the time of the night. Okay, guys, hopefully you picked up a few little hints yeah. today. No, yeah, the dollars no, at the fads. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we fished at 30. <laughs> yeah, the, for the dollies, guys, we fished at 36 and the 50s, both uh, north and north north, the last uh, three trips. And the, you bag out. Like, there's so many. Did you get. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No, you got to be hanging to get out. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. Um, anything from just pillies, no sinker, to um, soft plastics, hard bodies. They take anything, right? And fish about 150, well, 100 metres north of it, cast him back to it and drift back down to it. Hmm. Okay, guys, the first prize, about 300 bucks of gear. Uh, Stewie's going to draw it out. We've got a, no, we've got enough for 28 people, but it's 28, but there's no 28. <laughs> Sorry. Redraw. draw. Number six. Yay. Well done. Thank you, mate. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. Um, number two is about 200 bucks worth, I think. Uh, second. Thanks, Joe. 
Another early number, number eight. Yeah, well done, buddy. Always good when you guys get it. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, Thank mate. you. Thanks, Stuart. Thank Three, it's about 140, 150 bucks. Number 15. <coughs> Drew, you're up, buddy. Every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, congratulations, mate. Thanks, 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 uh, get down to the dreads now, sorry guys. For those of you who haven't got one. Number 16. Well done. Sorry guys, yeah, cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And last one. And guys, thanks for coming along. We're open for about another half an hour. Um, but if you do get out, anyone going tomorrow? Yeah, yeah a couple of you are. Okay, maybe, yeah. So the weather's like... Um, was supposedly four knots, five knots till about three o'clock. Okay. What would you suggest inside? Inside, um, if you like eating garfish, it's a garfish around. <laughs> <laughs> They're good fun. Uh, Jew wise, um, I'd probably hit, hit the I'd seaway to tom sea tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Would be the go. Tomorrow afternoon, there's heaps of sharks. But yeah, it's been pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the morning, uh, there's a big tail at the northern end of South Australia at the moment. I'm going to catch a big tail off the beach yeah. there. Yeah. On metals. Is that off in North Australia? South, South Australia. Australia. South Australia. Yeah, Ross got three, uh, four over 70 Four over 70 yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Four over 7 kilos. Uh, no, 70, 70, 70, about 3 or 4 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. 78 is the biggest one. Yeah. 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 Uh, last one. Uh, number 12. The swell's only a metre. Well done, buddy. We're taking the notes. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> Cheers, mate. So, guys, thank you, Stuart. Thanks for coming along. Um, our next seminar is on beach fishing, but more beach fishing. <laughs> um, and then we got deep dropping after that, I think. Something like that. Yeah, so, guys, get out there. Sunday morning, at this stage, I checked the weather. Um, the swell's still a bit, so about a metre. Uh, it's about two and a half out wide, though. Um, so that's subtly south swell, direct south from that low down south, kicking up. Uh, running from dead south to north. Yep. Um, troubles where we are, we're on the, we're nearly like level with Byron Bay, so we're the most eastern point, so we cop it, you know. Simple as that. Do you know what currents are? Yeah, only about 1.2, 1.3. 36 is a bit more. Oh, uh, only about probably 0.8. Under not, I'd say. Yeah, looking at the chart today. I looked at the chart today. Um, and uh, so yeah, Sunday's like uh, five to six knots till about um, one o'clock. Okay, so definitely worth a go. Which app is that windy? Oh, uh, windy. Uh, there is a lot of windy windies. Oh, uh, yeah. It's um, I I paid at that windy pro one, so that allows you to do lots of things. Pro, yeah. Yeah, it's about seventy bucks or about eighty bucks for years on. But I find that it's the best weather app. And it has everything on it, currents. Windy, windy yeah, windy.com and this, yeah, you'll see Windy Pro. Well, and you can look up to about 10 days in advance, but it's never right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could dream it's going to be okay. Yeah, that's right. You could have looked a whole lot, exactly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so one thing I have noticed with the weather, I don't know if it's, like, I'm not into conspiracies, but... I don't know if it's man-made, but the whole northern hemisphere, especially if you look at that windy, if you look zoom right out to the to the world, right, and you look at sort of Airly Beach up to uh, the Arctic Circle, so it's like there's only like two lows, like it normally is down this way, right? One low there, one over there, five to fifteen knots everywhere, like just beautiful, you know. Then you zoom down to Australia side, look from so from Airly Beach down to Antarctica. It is a wild storm all the way around. There's like 20 or 30 lows, massive ones. Global warming. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I'm not going to go there. But it's building and building, and as winter comes on, those lows will get more intense, and they just keep going round and round and round. So there's no breaks so until that those lows nick off. We're just going to have this bad weather pattern. Yeah, that's going to happen anyhow. I've never seen it before in my life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but the fishing's good, guys. <laughs> that's the consolation. I think you do. Thanks, gentlemen. No, no worries. I'll get it. I'll get it out of the board.